You're the Inquisitor. I thought you'd be scarier. Mother said you were scary. Why would your mother say such a thing? Because people fear the next stage if it comes too soon. Kieran, are you bothering the Inquisitor? Of course not. Did you see what's on his hand, Mother? I did see. Tis time to return to your studies, little man. Hmm. <laughs> My son. Never where you expect him to be, naturally. I didn't know you had a son. Why would you? I take great pains to not let my own reputation affect him in any way. To most in the Imperial Court, he's simply a quiet and well-spoken lad. Perhaps the heir of some distant family. But he goes where I go. Worry not, Inquisitor. Kieran is a curious boy, but seldom troublesome. Will his father be joining us as well? It would be most unlikely. His father helped raise Kieran for a time, but events have conspired to take him elsewhere. So, tis but the two of us, Inquisitor. Your fortress is a large place, and you will scarce notice our presence. He seems like a fine young man. But not the sort one might expect a woman like me to raise. No son of mine would be raised in a marsh, bereft of contact with the outside world. His future will be difficult enough without my adding to his burden. To think... Until recently, this place stood decrepit, occupied only by the desperate and the lost. Now it is party to events that threaten to shake the world. I wonder if it is pleased. It sounds like you've heard of Skyhold before. This fortress was built upon the remains of a site holy to the ancient elves. They called it Tarar Salan, the place where the sky is kept. It is said that from here, they reached up to the heavens to bring them down to rest. They abandoned it, as did the humans who came after them. Bones laid upon bones, silent until your arrival. I like this place. I've made it mine. The magic in this place has seeped into the stones, protecting it from darkness. Those who let it fall to ruin did not know what they possessed. You, I think shall do it justice. You were kind to welcome my aid, Inquisitor, even knowing as little of me as you do. I will do my best to aid your cause with all the knowledge at my disposal. This I swear to you. I appreciate whatever help you can give us. Some might think Corypheus a madman for seeking godhood. Yet one must ask what were the old gods? What secrets of theirs did the ancient magisters know? What I fear, what all should fear, is not that Corypheus believes he can succeed, it is that he actually may. Leliana gave me the note that the hero of Ferelden included for me. She may even have left it sealed. A pity. You would have learned things that could make even an Orlesian blush. Now, was there anything else? Now that you've seen the Inquisition up close, what are your impressions? Tis remarkable what you have built. I will give you that. Soldiers are camped outside Skyhold in numbers that would give any nation pause. All this in precious little time conjured from thin air through the power of fervor alone. I wonder if Corypheus suspected what he was enabling, just as I wonder what will become of all this once he is defeated. We have to defeat him first, then I'll worry about what's next. Should that happen, the world will lie at your feet, more or less. Beware the heights you reach, Inquisitor. When this is done, Many will be eager to knock you back down. What work have you been doing to help us? Currently, my efforts are focused on determining what Corypheus is, and from where his power comes. The elven orb he carries is what draws my attention. 
I wonder if the power he used to tear open the Fade, in fact, came from the Orb. Perhaps it is even the source of your anchor. If I learn of its origin, I may also learn what Corypheus now intends, as well as his weaknesses. I could use your company for my excursions outside Skyhold. I have spent my share of time wandering the wilderness in the company of others, Inquisitor. Thank you for the invitation, but for now I will restrict my efforts to researching the Arcane. Do you know anything about his dragon? It has the appearance of an archdemon. Of that, I am certain. A true archdemon, however, is supposedly the corrupted form of an old god. Has Corypheus actually dug up one of the ancient prisons? If so, why has a new blight not begun? His dragon is something else, something connected to his blighted nature as well as his magic. Beyond that, I cannot say. Is it even possible that Corypheus could succeed? The Black City exists. Wherever one goes in the Fade, it is visible in the sky. The last time Corypheus and his cohort stormed its doors, they unleashed the Blight upon the world. This time, perhaps he might indeed gain untold power, becoming something unto a god. It is also possible he could unleash something far worse than the Blights. So yes, Corypheus could succeed in his goal. If not, his attempt alone could destroy the world. Corypheus says I'm a rival. Does that mean... Could you become a god? That depends. Are you prepared to use your anchor to enter the Black City? No, never. Tell Corypheus that, and see if he believes you. However you can help, it's appreciated. Continue prodding at Corypheus, Inquisitor. Elicit a reaction, and we may yet learn from it. I'd like to know more about you. Ah, yes. Whence comes the mystery woman slinking her way into the Inquisition's ranks? Once I was an apostate, living well away from the banal influence of the Chantry in the Kakari Wilds. Then came the Fifth Blight with its dark spawn, and I left Ferelden for the Empress's court. It is certain the nobles of Orlais breathe a collective sigh of relief that I am now here. It's odd that an apostate could live so... openly. <laughs> it confuses those who expect apostates to cower and hide. I stand boldly before them and demand to know why I need some Chantry mage to teach me to control my power. They would put me on a leash so they can feel safer at night. I am uninterested in their comfort. Naturally, it helps to have friends in high places. The Orlesian court seems like an odd place to find someone like you. That was the point, originally. I knew the Empress was intrigued by the Arcane, and that I could answer questions no Chantry mage could. Thus, we fit together nicely. I became her advisor, and she my benefactor and source of refuge. Truth be told, our arrangement would not have lasted much longer. Too many wagging tongues, even for Selene. You were in Ferelden during the Blight. The Blight began in the Kukari Wilds, so yes, I experienced it firsthand. Indeed, I fought at the hero of Ferelden's side for a time. He is the reason the Blight was defeated. We became close, closer than I even thought possible. When I left, he pursued me. And after that, I came to Orlais, the last place one would look for me, or such was my hope. I'll leave you to the garden. Of course. Here to help, Inquisitor. Good day to you, Inquisitor. I was pleased to learn you saved the Grey Wardens from their own self-destructive foolishness. For all their eagerness to shed blood for their cause, we will still need them should another blight arise. It is fortunate my Warden was not there, or he would surely have been in the middle of it. Your Warden? You might know him as the Hero of Ferelden. A lofty title, though he wears it well. I didn't see you as the type to settle down, Morrigan. <laughs> Tis not so domestic as you picture. 
but even so, it has far outstripped my expectations. My love is on a quest to combat the calling, the actual calling that signals the end of a warden's life. If he is successful, it will mean a long life for him, perhaps for them all. Once Corypheus has been defeated, I fully intend to join my love once more. Kieran misses him greatly. It seems odd he went on an adventure and you stayed behind. We are neither of us so weak we would die of loneliness. Where he went, Kieran could not follow and thus I remained behind to look after our son. We will be together again soon enough, and I am glad of it. How can the calling be stopped? Is that actually possible? Grand Enchanter Fiona was once a Grey Warden, but something removed the blight from her blood. Similarly, a warden mage named Avaness performed experiments that prolonged his life to unnatural lengths. So, we know it is possible. Indeed, twas I who found the lead my love now follows in the Western lands. Success is not guaranteed, of course, but he has never lacked for determination. Are the two of you happy together? The three of us? And it is little business of yours. But yes. I never thought to find someone in this world I could trust as an equal. He has been a good partner. And a good father. And now I pray we discuss something else, lest these honeyed words make me vomit. Is there any way the hero of Ferelden could help us against Corypheus? Tis unlikely. Corypheus uses the Blight, but he is not controlled by it like a true Darkspawn. Still, my love has ever been resourceful. I can give the Inquisition a means to send him a message. He will think this means I miss him, of course. Oh, he will be insufferably pleased with himself. I hope you appreciate this sacrifice, Inquisitor. I imagine your forces will be heading into the Arbor Wilds very soon, Inquisitor. Trust me when I say that wherever the Alluvian is hidden, it is worth any effort to prevent Corypheus from acquiring it. I'll leave you to the garden. Of course. Greetings, Inquisitor. Of course. Some look to Cassandra or even me as Justinia's successor. I never thought the idea would gain momentum. Of course, with the other candidates out of the picture... Is becoming divine something you really want? <laughs> when Justinia was alive, I would have laughed at anyone who even suggested that I could be her successor. Things have changed. Still, I don't know. Restoring the Chantry will be like trying to steer a sinking vessel through a storm. Whoever becomes divine will have my support if she requires it. And I'm sure whoever becomes divine will absolutely require the Inquisition's backing. The Chantry is faltering, but it still has influence over the people. Who tells the people what's right? Who do they look to in times of peril? A divine with enough support can change the Chantry. And with it, Thedas. But this is a discussion for later. If Corypheus wins, finding a new divine will be the least of our problems. A message from Divine Justinia. That's a shock. Are you all right reading it? Thank you for the concern, Inquisitor. But I am. This message was written months perhaps even years ago, to be delivered to me if she died. I've heard of such contingency plans. A sudden death often leaves loose ends. I'm to go to Valence, a small village on the waking sea. There is something hidden there. You know what you're looking for? 
The Divine was a powerful woman who used her position to obtain all sorts of things. Whatever she hid in Valence would very likely benefit the Inquisition and must be kept from falling into the wrong hands. If I'm lucky, she will have instructions for me. Why hide things in Valence? What's so special about it? Justinia was revered mother at the Chantry there for many years before she became the Divine. It is a place that holds great meaning for her. I'll help in whatever way I can. Wonderful. I was hoping you would agree to come with me to Valence. One more thing. If what is hidden in Valence is as valuable as I think, we're not going to be the only ones looking for it. I shall meet you at the Chantry in Valence. Try not to delay. I'm listening. Anything I should know? Celine has cemented power in Orlais. Good, we need an ally like her. At the moment, she's said to be rooting out the last of Gaspard's supporters. Once that is done, we will have a united Orlais behind the Inquisition. You seem to know a great many people. I have made friends, and on occasion enemies. It's unavoidable. What do you know of Morrigan? She's changed. She used to be so disagreeable, cruel. She said things just to hurt people. Now the sharp edges have worn away. Perhaps it was Kira. He seems so normal, like any other little boy, and so polite. Not that I was expecting anything else. I mean, never mind. We can continue this conversation later. You know where I am. The Empress has gifted us with a selection of rare books. I can't wait till they arrive. A request has been made of you, Inquisitor. Here it is. As you were. Inquisitor, I wonder if you might help me with a delicate situation. There is an alchemical formula that I must complete, but I have been unable to obtain a critical ingredient. The heart of a snowy wyvern. I had arranged to obtain one, but the chevaliers working with me were killed in the Civil War. If I'm going to hunt down a snowy wyvern, I need you to tell me everything you know about it. They're quite rare and exceedingly dangerous. Their venom is the most potent of any wyvern. Ordinary hunters would not make the attempt. The risk is too great. You, my dear, would certainly be an equal to this monster. I didn't know you were an alchemist, Vivian. What exactly is this project you're working on? It is a special request from a member of the Council of Herald. I am still the Imperial Court Enchanter, after all. The matter is private. That is all there is to say. You want me to risk my life to get this thing for you, but won't tell me what it's for? My dear, it is hardly proper for me to blab the secrets of those who put trust in my discretion. I would not have attained my position at court if I didn't know when to be silent. I'm not a hunter. Why do you think I can help? This beast is not hunted for sport, as other wyverns sometimes are. It is far more deadly. In the past, chevaliers have been dispatched to either kill the creatures or drive them away from villages. Since my chevaliers have fallen to political conflict, I find myself in need of someone with a martial aptitude. I'll do what I can. Thank you, my dear. I would be most grateful. I shall give the location of its lair to Cullen. Remember, my dear, I must have its heart or the potion will not work. I eagerly await your success.
can't make heads or tails of this. Age regression. Who is this potion for? Greetings again, Inquisitor. I'll leave you to it. Marvelous business, the Winter Palace. You saved an empress, and now she's eating out of your hand. Perfect mental image. All this dancing politics and murder... Ah, makes me a bit homesick. That's something you actually miss. Who wouldn't? All the trauma, the scandal, the petty maneuverings. Back home, we engage in social affairs with the grim intensity of war. When blood is spilled, the battle is won. Less fun when you're the target, but to watch. My. Yes. I hope you tried the ham they were serving, by the way. It tasted of despair. It's fascinating. I should go. Try not to... Something you need? As you... There are spirits hovering by the veil to observe the thrones of powerful nations. Machinations, betrayals. After our time in Halam Shirao, I understand why. I had forgotten how I missed court intrigue. I'm pleased you had a good time. Political gambits, broken promises, half-truths. It is a palace full of motivation. And motivation is where great things happen. In any event, Selene should now be a steadfast ally. Especially after helping her neutralize Riala. I hope you know that I didn't turn over Briala lightly. If I'd had another option... What? Why would I disapprove of... Oh, because we're both elves. I'm sorry, I was confused. I do not consider myself to have much in common with the elves. Who do you have much in common with? Who are your people? A good question. I joined the Inquisition to save the world. Regardless of who my people are, this was the best way to help them. As for the Elves of Orlay, I believe Briala is doing quite well on their behalf. She is an admirable woman. She's done good work. Hopefully, with our help, she can help them even more. Yes. However much I identify, or fail to identify, with her people, Briala's efforts have been remarkable. She organized resistance against a powerful enemy using only her wits and the resources at hand. That demands respect, especially in a world where most would look at her and only see a pair of pointed ears. How can I help? I'd be interested in hearing your opinions on elven culture. Perhaps you could ask Sarah. She has opinions. Sarah is part of our team. You don't need to be snide about her. Actually, on some level, I do. She takes it better than she would take my pity. Or my envy. She has a purity of purpose that I lack. I have observed too much and done too little. What do you wish to know? Is elven magic different from the magic used by humans? No and yes. Magic is magic, just as water is water. But it can be used in different ways. Dalish magic is more practical not needing Chantry approval, although they still frown on blood magic. Superstition. Much of it is more subtle. A legacy from when elves were immortal. Legends of elven immortality. Did they use magic to increase their lifespan? No. It was simply part of being elven. The subtle beauty of their magic was the effect, not the cause of their nature. Some spells took years to cast, Echoes would linger for centuries, harmonizing with new magic in an unending symphony. It must have been beautiful. You said that the censure against blood magic was a superstition. I did. It's fortunate Cassandra is not within earshot. Most modern cultures forbid blood magic. Publicly, even Devinda disapproves of it. But as I said, magic is magic. It matters only in how it is used. Every time I've seen blood magic used, it has been for some evil purpose. I once saw a woman stabbed in the stomach with a dagger. 
She died slowly, in agony. It was repulsive. If the Chantry outlawed daggers, would that stop people from using them? Of course not. Some would use daggers in secret, ashamed, and some would find rebellion titillating, step down the path of depravity. You don't need to sacrifice a slave's life to make a dagger. I suppose it depends upon the dagger. How many men have you killed while fighting for the Inquisition? How many more will you kill out of necessity? And if blood magic could help you? Well, it matters little to me. I do not use it, but I do not think it evil. I'd like to know more about the elves from before our time. The Dalish strive to remember Halam Sharal. But Halam Sharal was merely a fumbling attempt to recreate a forgotten land. Arlefan. Elvanan was the empire, and Arlevan its greatest city. Place of magic and beauty, lost to time. You've studied the ancient elves. What else do you know of Arlevan? We hear stories of them living in trees, and imagine wooden ramps or Dalish aravels. Imagine instead spires of crystal twining through the branches, palaces floating among the clouds. Imagine beings who lived forever, for whom magic was as natural as breathing. That is what was lost. I'd like to know more about the Dalish elves. It is a mistake to think of the Dalish as a single group. They have lived as separate clans for centuries now. As a consequence, each clan has learned, interpreted, and forgotten different parts of elven history. Some trade freely with humans, or adopt city elves who flee the alienages. Others attack humans on sight. What can you tell me about elves living in human cities? The culture in alienages or among the slaves of the winter is like any of the impoverished and powerless. They cling to memories of a better past and practice a few rituals to distinguish themselves from humans. We'll talk later. Goodbye. Good afternoon. We'll talk later. Goodbye. I need to have a few words with my publisher. The first one will be you, and the second one will be Bastard. They've claimed for years my crime serials don't sell in Orlay. So why is the Council of Heralds asking me for autographs? Sorry, distracted. Anyway, you need something? Can I ask you something? You want to talk about me? <laughs> no. If you've got questions, I'm your dwarf. Carry on. I do not believe a reminder is necessary for this accused. Her capture and disgrace could not have been more public. Grand Duchess Florian de Chalon, although her titles are among the dignities already at risk of forfeiture. You spared her life despite her treachery. What becomes of it now falls to you. The consequences of our dance continue to echo, Lady Florian. No. Despite her posture, Lady Florian has acknowledged your authority. Should I curse you on behalf of the Elder One? I realize he had no intention of honoring the Concordats I manipulated. Do as you must. I respect your mastery of the game, even as I despise your victory. Celine does not know her fortune. She remains a creature of formality and opportunity. We have use for both. Grand Duchess, Josephine will see that your wiles profit the Inquisition. Don't disappoint. Oh, one must remember that the game is never truly over, Your Worship.
change for you, Inquisitor. You're used to that by now, right? I'll see you later, Dagna. I can't wait. Anything you need? to be in the thick of the game again. The last time I was at Alam Shiral was Countess Letien's wedding. There were a dozen affairs, five secret alliances, and a duel between two chevaliers over the vintage of an Antivan port. But until the Duchess was unmasked, I've never seen the Winter Palace in shock. You don't see the Empress of Orlais almost killed in cold blood every day. Not so brazenly, no. The game's become increasingly insular in the past few years. Corypheus skillfully took advantage. It's disturbing so few people in the Orlesian court were aware of the Duchess's machinations. The Empress realized she was in danger. She's always in danger. Those loyal to her should have practiced more vigilance. But let's not lose sight of victory. Your actions at the ball have secured us allies and favors alike. My favorite moment of the evening is still our waltz in the garden. I could have danced with you for hours. We must do it again sometime. Time to plan our next attack. What's the state of the Inquisition? Our alliance with Orlais holds, for the present. They'll send aid on request. And your actions at Adamant denied Corypheus his army of pet demons. With Orlais support, our numbers match his. Corypheus's followers must be panicking. My agents agree. Our victories have shaken his disciples. Perhaps they'll rethink following the Darkspawn Magister from the dawn of time. Where is Corypheus now? After you dealt with the Duchess, Corypheus uprooted his major strongholds. He's moving south to the Arbor Wilds. His army clearly wasn't prepared to flee. Our victories have them on the defensive. They've terrorized Thedas long enough. We end them now. If Corypheus is hiding in the Arbor Wilds, that's where we'll go. But what is Corypheus doing in such a remote area? His people have been ransacking elven ruins since Haven. We believe he seeks more. What he hopes to find, however, continues to elude us. Which should surprise no one. Fortunately, I can assist. You have my attention, Lady Morrigan. 
What Corypheus seeks in those forgotten woods is as ancient as it is dangerous. Which is? His best, if I show you. This is an Illuvian, an elven artifact from a time long before their empire was lost to human greed. I restored this one at great cost, but another lies within the Arbor Wilds. That is what Corypheus seeks. It's beautiful in its way. I found legends of an elven temple within the Arbor Wilds, untouched. It proved too dangerous to approach, and thus I turned elsewhere to find my prize. If Corypheus has turned southward, he could succeed where I failed. The Illuvian would be his. What does it do? A more appropriate question would be, where? Does it lead? If this place once had a name, it has long been lost. I call it the crossroads, a place where all Illuvians join, wherever they might be. Is this place dangerous? It feels... Unnatural, yes. We are, however, in no immediate peril. The ancient elves left no roads, only ruins hidden in far-flung corners. This is how they traveled between them. As you can see, most of the mirrors are dark, broken, corrupted, or unusable. As for the rest, a few can be opened from this side, but only a few. How did you find out about this place? My travels have led me to many strange destinations, Inquisitor. Once, they led me here. It offered sanctuary. Sanctuary? Not all the mirrors lead back to our world. The ancients were nothing if not resourceful. If they don't lead back to our world, then... Places between, like... This one, I can describe it no better. For a time, I had a respite with the man I loved. But only for a time, one cannot remain in between forever. What do you mean, a few can be opened from this side? Some of the Illuvians have been left unlocked, like doors accidentally left ajar. All others are closed. They can be opened only from beyond. Opened how? With a key. I suppose you have such a key. The key can be many things. Each Alluvian is different. I have knowledge as well as power. Often that is enough. Corypheus wants to come here. This is not the Fade, but it is very close. 
Someone with enough power could tear down the ancient barrier. And enter the Fade in the flesh, like Corypheus wanted to do with the Anchor. He learned of the Alluvian in the Arbor Wilds, as I did. He marshals the last of his forces to reach it. You have made Corypheus desperate, Inquisitor. We must work together to stop him, and soon. what we have. All right. <laughs> 